Good evening, race friends. Welcome to the FEG PC sponsored Daytona 50 special event they're putting on, showcasing the new iRacing next gen cars. You're going to see these competitors out here pushing these things as hard as they can around Daytona Speedway. It's a 50 lap showdown, so it should be a good time. Coming up about five minutes left in practice, a little bit over five and a half. We're going to watch these guys make their way around. Make sure we've got all our settings good to go. Showcase tonight's feature. Right now, we've got Craig Arvanati's on top of the board, followed by Dalton McSweeney, Donald Stewart, three fastest cars out there so far. Just while these guys are in practice and kind of getting used to the track, getting used to these new cars, you're going to see them trying to see how hard they can push each other, how much bump drafting they can get away with. But it should be a good show here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Practice a little bit less than five minutes. Team number seven of, looks like that is Dan Owens, who we're chasing around right now. He's looking around Dustin Forsberg, see if they can get a little bit of bump draft and going on in practice, a little bit of seat time and figure things out before the main event starts. But should be a good race tonight here at the FEG PC Racing League. guys at home, ladies and gentlemen, is will these cars be doing pit stops around the 25 lap or so, or, or what the pit strategy is going to be? These new cars, there's not a lot of testing that's been done so far. In our experience running around Daytona, Talladega, you can expect to see a pit window between lap 20 and 30, so ideally you're going to see guys trying to stretch it out to at least the 25 mark, maybe bring it around lap 30 for a pit stop, but not quite sure what the strategy is going to be here with a bunch of racers uh, trying a little bit something new tonight. Sorry, Dalton. Ah, we see the number 48 kind of run out of uh, control there. That's oh, Dalton no McKinney issue. hitting the wall. Trying to break that bubble. With uh, with three minutes to go, let's run a quick commercial break. We'll go ahead and knock that out of the way, the FEG PC yeah, these commercials. Cars take a very and then uh, we'll be right back with qualifying. We'll see you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, again, big ups to FEG PC. These guys build performance systems just for simulators. So whether you're a fan of iRacing, maybe ACC, Microsoft Flight Sim, PCS, any hard impact game that you want to play in your spare time is going to require the absolute best hardware, check out FEG PC. They've got custom builds for guys that are running triple screens, guys that are running uh, VR headsets. 
And guys like me, they're broadcasters. You need the absolute best hardware you can afford in today's time to get this most, most uh, bang for your buck out of the system. So, again, thank you to FEG PC for tonight, uh, tonight's sponsor. We greatly appreciate you. Also run probably, I believe, two or three uh, league events throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, here on the FEG PC League. So, always something fun to do. I believe they do a mix of asphalt. They do everything as long as it involves going fast. And again, for your gaming broadcasting over here. Looks like the top four is shaking up a little bit and we got William Lowther on top followed by Jeffrey Radke and then Jay Dargert running one, two, and three here in open practice. William Lowther, the only D-rating licensed gentleman out there looks like tonight. Uh, maybe just one of two D-class drivers, so good to see him getting this out. Awesome. William Lothar, the lone Canadian, currently sitting on top of the board, so we can see him. Looks like open practice is coming to a close. We're going to get ready for qualifying. All right, let's see who takes the field here first as open qualifying gets ready to go. Hopefully our friends at home are ready for a good, exciting race. 50 laps Daytona and these next-gen cars is going to be really good pack racing. From what we've seen, these next-gen cars are able to break the bubble just a little bit better than the old aero style of the cup cars currently in iRacing. Uh, not sure if that's going to be really true to the realism as iRacing and NASCAR kind of figures out the date on these things. But it's, uh, from a driver's point of view, a little bit more fun pack racing. You can get right up on your buddies and, and still catch a draft even if you're almost a, over a second behind him, so should lead to some really good racing tonight. Just waiting for open qualifying to get started here. Looks like the event started a little bit later, but we've got a bunch of people that trickled in. Tons and tons of drivers out there. A lot of really high-class drivers here. We've seen 6,300 I rating. We see 3,000 I rating, 4,800, 4,700. So it's going to be a field of absolutely stacked drivers here tonight. If you're wondering at home, hey, what's in it for these drivers? Winner tonight will get $25 courtesy of FEG PC, and they will also do a drawing for a random finisher to also gain $25. So even if you're out here racing and you're not quite in that top box, still a chance for you to bring home some money tonight. Wanting to get in on the action? Go to FEGPC.net. You can join their Discord, find out more about friendly races they're hosting throughout the week. This uh, this race tonight, no entry fee. You just got to be a part of the Discord. And you too can get out there for a chance to win some money. Still waiting on a qualifying to finally kick off, so there we go. We've got Craig Arvantes getting on top of the board here. They're going to be trading back and forth. We're going to try and get a Kangle, uh, camera angle on these drivers. Looks like the screen does not want to show uh, show qualifying for some reason tonight. That's a, a definitely a fun iRacing glitch. iRacing, despite all of its uh, imperfections, still probably the best driving sim you can get out here tonight. Thank you to those guys who are going to be tuning in tonight as well. We greatly appreciate you. We see you, Pawski, in the, the spectators booth as well as Dube1985. Greatly appreciate you guys. Currently qualifying is underway. These guys are doing two-lap lone qualifying. So we're going to be waiting for these guys to go out and finish their times. We've got Arvantes, Arvanati's, excuse me, on top of the board with a 48-19. Owen's right behind him. Arvanati's one of those guys I mentioned earlier. He's a 2000 I rating A-class driver, so definitely no, uh, no inexperience here coming to the to the iRacing circuit. So we're going to expect good things out of him. William Lothar, we mentioned him earlier, the lone Canadian out here. He's currently sitting in fifth in the 21 machine, so... Looking forward for good things for him. A lot of these guys in a big, uh, big plate car track like this tonight, you're not going to see quite as much um, uh, qualifying effect coming into play. So these guys, as much as they want to qualify up front, everybody wants bragging rights. As long as you're kind of in that top five spot, 
you should be in a good position to run to the end. I don't believe there's any stage racing tonight, so these guys are going to run wide open the entire time until they have to come in for their pit window. Again, we think it's going to be around lap 25 to 26, maybe a little bit later, depending on pit strategy among the different drivers. And they'll also decide if they're going to come in with a buddy, maybe find a draft partner, or uh, make up their own plan as they go. But, again, qualifying not going to be as crucial tonight with these uh, this wide open racetrack. Looks like that top board hasn't shaken up a whole lot here. We've got Matthew Lee sitting on provisional pole, followed by Peyton Howell, TJ O'Hare, and, and Craig Arvantes, and Dan Owens. Currently our top five in the provisional pole here, so going to be interesting to see what these guys can do here. I, right, for one, I'm excited. 30 seconds left in qualifying. It's anybody's race. I don't have the pleasure of knowing many of these racers yet. It's my first time broadcasting with the FEG PC family. So, not quite sure uh, from the announcer's booth who's going to be the uh, the top dog here. Some of these guys run together week in and week out. They know each other. They know who they can drive hard with, who they can push, and then who they, they know who needs to get a little bit of extra space. So, the driver is a little bit more familiar with each other than I am. But, again, with looks like 30 entries tonight, only about 13 have put down qual times. Right as we say that, yeah, it looks like 25 cars have made the grid tonight. Again, Daytona International is going to be 50 laps here around, sponsored by the FEG PC Daytona 50 special event. Uh, I believe it's a fixed setup race. I'm not sure what the tire limit is. I did not get in the, the, the driver's debrief, but I don't think tires are going to be coming in much of a play. But let's go down the pole tonight. On pole, we've got Matthew Lee from New England. Peyton Howell is going to bring home our first row tonight. We've got Mr. O'Haren starting in third, followed by Craig Arvantes. We've got Dan Owens in fifth, then Blaine Edwards. Dalton McKinney starting seventh, followed by William Lothar, James Kaufman, Eli Warren, Buddy Pitts, Dustin Forsberg starting tonight. We've got Chad Ross starting 15, Eric Parks in 16th, Jeffrey Radke and Kenneth McCullough. We've got Joshua Dube and then Stephen Page, Jose Medina, Jay Dargert. And then finally, we've got Justin Hopp and Joseph Burgess will be bringing up our field tonight. Looks like about 24 drivers have entered. Drivers, if I've mispronounced your name, please let me know in the FEGPC Discord so I can get it corrected for next time. We're also going to want to interview some of the drivers after the race tonight, so make sure if you're in that top three, you hop in the winning room for the announcer's booth. And we're going to get ready to grid them up here at Daytona International Speedway. Fifty laps. We've got about an hour and a half time limit set on this bad boy. Most of these guys have jobs. They've got stuff to do tomorrow. With this talent of field, we're going to hope to see some really good green flag runs tonight. So hopefully there are not cautions. There aren't going to be a, a deciding factor. We want to see this thing go green from start to finish. As the racers are starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit edgy, ready to get out on formation here. So Matthew Lee, Peyton Howell, TJ O'Hare, and Craig Arvantes, Blaine Edwards. That's going to be our top five as we get ready to start tonight. Anybody's guess what's going to happen here tonight? I'm expecting good, clean racing again. A very, very stacked field of talented drivers. I don't think there's going to be many problems if at all from this top five pack. Your guess is as good as mine what's going to happen from midfield back. That's usually where the racing gets the most exciting, whether they mean to or not. As everybody wants a chance at that $25 win tonight. They're going to stack them up here at Daytona International Speedway. Definitely a wide open track. Drafting and partnerships are going to be your best friends. You try to make your way to the front. These cars pretty stable when you're running nose to tail. You can push pretty darn aggressively nose to bumper all the way around the racetrack without any worries. You just kind of trust the guys you're working with. It's probably the biggest thing for these drivers to take away. A lot of beautiful paint. Matthew Payton, uh, excuse me, Matthew, Matthew Lee and Peyton Howell 
A lot of really sharp looking cars here tonight. These guys, uh, they put in work even when they're not driving. And it looks like those may be teammates up front. Not sure if that's an M4 paint scheme I see. No, excuse me, MS paint scheme. So a couple teammates taking one and two up here. So you're going to expect to see these guys. One of the drivers is probably going to communicate, get a great launch and see everybody else fall in. But green flag is off. It's just like that. We've got Matt C out front getting pushed by his teammate Peyton Howe. They're going to drop down single file right off the back as we see the 71 aggressively pushing the 04 machine. These guys are going to try and get a little bit of a gap on the field behind them. And laps and, and kind of get away from the carnage that may be happening behind them, but for the most part, they're trying to bring out and really get down as a pile. We've got some guys put in the back and want to take it two by two as far back as they can go, but man, right now, Peyton Howell all over the rear door, excuse me, the rear bumper of Matthew Lee. We're taking it on board with Peyton Howell. He's pushing his teammate Lee. He gets out of the draft there for a second. Might have gotten a little bit loose from the draft, but before that, you can see just how hard he was pushing. The front bumper was absolutely buried to the rear of that 04 machine. So these guys are going to try and keep it clean, keep it green. Craig Arvine is running third place in the machine. He's going to try and reel in that lead pack. These guys may be happy just following the final for the first half of this race and then kind of work themselves as it goes on, but. Matthew Lee is going to be at the disadvantage as far as the field goes as well. Everybody else behind him has got a little bit more aero assistance from Matthew pushing all that air out of the way. So they might be able to have a half a lap all the way up to a full lap further, depending on what the fuel strategy is for these drivers. But one by one, as far back as they can see, we got a little bit of action going on. It looks like a huge blink. Far that was. That is the last thing you want to see when you're in such a tight pack like this. Round and round they go. Looks like teammate Peyton Howells. He's all right to take a little bit of a look on his friend Peyton there, but thinks better of it, drops back down in line. We got, looks like the number seven machine trying to make a drive on the outside, but just no one to help him out here. The side draft is strong, but not quite strong enough to make something happen. When you got to train a four or five cars in front of you, pushing a lot of air out of the way. And Joseph Berger is having a problem. He went back into the pit lane already in this event. And that lead pack is getting a little bit of space. It's only a couple of minutes between them in second place. But on a track like Talladega, you can negate that pretty darn quickly with the draft. But that's just a testament to how hard these guys are pushing each other and trying to get a little bit of space on it. But Again, fuel is going to be a concern here. We're only four laps in, but everybody's kept it pretty clean so far. Nobody willing to take any big risk here and try and make something happen. And like you can see, we got a few cars trying to get that outside line working, but with only a three-pack, not much they can do against that dominant inside lane here at Daytona. Again, unless you, uh, unless you probably got more cars in the lane beside you, you're not going to be able to get a massive pass and run and do anything with it. And the worst thing you can do is kind of get yourself on the outside with that run and realize, oh, no, I've got to run here. And you kind of get stuck out there all by yourself. But start to see that, insert, that, that outside line hinting of getting something working. Number 48 machine is getting a huge, huge run there, but I don't know if Don McKean is going to have anything to do with it as he's, again, once all by him lonesome. McKinney all out there by himself in the ally machine. Each car getting a little bit of a drive out there deciding what they're going to try and do with it, but that outside line not really forming yet. They're going to have to link up nose to tail and kind of commit to it for a couple laps if they want to get anything done here. So. Doesn't look like McKinney's going to be, it looks like the 14 is into the wall briefly. Gets a little bit of contact. Not what he wants to see this early on in the race. Arrow's going to be a huge, huge game changer on this track. So far, great racing though. Start to finish, everybody's keeping it pretty clean. 
Nobody's willing to do anything risky or boneheaded to try and get a position this early on in the race. And those leaders, once again, just nose the tail, pushing each other as hard as they possibly can. Again, great racing from all these competitors. Really good to see everybody, really good to see everybody keeping it so clean during this. Forty-three machine doing his best to get something going, but that seventy-one is just staying just ahead of him. Nobody wants to make that pass just early on. And there we go, that outside line starting to form up here. They are finally getting going in here as they go around Daytona International Speedway. Absolutely fantastic racers from everybody tonight. Again, I, I'm First time calling the FEG PC series, but everybody's doing their absolute best, keeping it very clean here. It's good to see. Just single file as far back as the eye can see. How many of these drivers typically run with each other? How many showed up for just the money race tonight? So, gonna be interesting to see in these post-race interviews how often these guys normally run together. But so far, very impressed with the quality and caliper of racers here tonight. Not much has changed in this opening field though. Lee and Powell starting exactly where they finished. Uh, not that you can a whole lot of positions here. Let's take a look at oh, the commentator's curse. We had somebody, I believe it was, not quite sure who that was. We had time and scoring showed somebody up 11 positions for their go. And there we got our first caution of the night, ladies and gentlemen. So lap 10 of 50 brings out the first caution. Let's see if we can get a uh, an eye. I think it was Joshua Dube or Doobie who had the first crash. Let's see if we can get that on the replay here. Oh, Doobie with a spectacular crash. Not sure. Oh, just the carnage here, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see if we can get a uh, see where it all started here. Looks like the 18 up and over and behind him, just absolute carnage here at Daytona. That's the bad thing about these tracks, and when there's a crash, it is an absolutely spectacular one. So it looks like driver effective. We got James Kaufman, Joshua Doobie. We've got, for the most part, a lot more people involved in the crash, but lifetime didn't show it. You can see guys starting to drop down the pits here and kind of kind of rethink things, but that lead car, that lead pack, looks like it kept it clean. We've still got Matthew Lee, Peyton Howell up front. Somebody to mention here, Kenneth McCullough Jr. He's up nine positions so far in the number one machine. So with 11 laps in, it's gonna be interesting to see which of these guys decide to cycle in, maybe take a little bit of fuel, or see if they're gonna wait on a halfway mark for the race. So. Not sure what our drivers are going to do here or what they're going to side on, but with 11 to go, that was an absolute spectacular crash here tonight. Yeah, here comes the pack. It looks like everyone's going to come in for tires, or excuse me, fuel, possibly tires. Not sure what the call is going to be here.
Going to be very interesting to see what the pit strategies are with only 12 laps in of 50 so far. These guys may be able to do the rest of the stage without any problems. We see, I think somebody, number six machine, Eli Warren, uh, might have missed his pit stall on that one. A little bit confused. He might have just come in for fuel or, yeah, just a little bit of splash of fuel to get back out there. Maybe he's thinking track missions can be a little bit more important, but looks like everybody's kind of keeping it clean on pit road. Some competitors opting for tires there. But Eli Warning show, uh, Warren showing has no pit time at all there. Matthew Lee with a six, uh, a little bit over a six second pit time. Looks like only a few drivers took the full pit stop. We've got Dalton McKinney, Jeffrey Radke, Stephen Page, Dustin Forsberg, and looks like Joshua Doobie all electing for a full pit stop there. So these guys might have taken full fuel, full uh, and tires as well. So not quite sure what the strategy there is, but we're watching Eli Warren of that number 16 machine. Did not actually come in for a pit stop. He drove through pit lane, but did not actually take fuel or tires. Not sure if that was on purpose or maybe he pulled an advanced move that nobody else is planning for. And we're gonna see him pay off later in the race here, but only 38 to go. Not sure if he's gonna have the fuel to make it till the end or if he's gonna bank on another caution here and he's deciding, you know what, track vision's worth it to me. But no, we just like that, we see Eli Warren coming back into the pit lane. So he's gonna come in and, and try to hit the pit stall this go around. And just like that, we've got Matthew Lee, Peyton Howell back up front. Lee and Peyton, both teammates out here tonight, they know what it takes to run out front and stay there. Both qualifying one and two, and they have remained there. Both of these guys on a pretty short uh, pit window. Looks like they uh, I mean, only six second pit stop. So at most, they took two tires, but most likely they just came in for fuel. They know they can bump traffic and work hard together and kind of keep everything going. So they're gonna wanna stay out front. And looks like we got three teammates in the mix up there. The 72 machine or uh Yeah, it looks like that's Blayton Edwards, also one of the teammates up there. Running 71 and 72, so all three teammates looks like they're out front tonight. So gonna be interesting to see if these three cars can work strong together with a three-man team. They should be able to get something working and get a, get a good, clean draft going on. Pace car is coming in, green flag is out. The 04 Matthew Lee gets a spectacular launch. He's going to let his teammate, the 72 machine, tuck in behind him. But just like that, you got the three teammates one, two, three Lee, Edwards, Howell. They're going to get that draft working strong together and see if they can put a little bit of space with a three car team running all up there together. They have a little bit of a luxury as far as that goes. They know it's going to be very, very tough on the outside line to get forming while these competitors work together. They've got the cars, they've got the talent, and most importantly, they've got the momentum here. So, expecting these guys to try to make something happen. Looks like that was our boss trying to get a little bit of outside line working. He's gonna try and get that side draft, see if he can suck in the 71 machine and keep him parked next to him. But once again, no love for the outside lines. He just can't quite get the cars to rally behind him. He's gonna get stuck out there in no man's land and he's probably gonna fall back to that, uh, the end of the lead pack as we see. So Blayton Edwards currently running second place. He's up four positions. Donald Stewart, though, in sixth place. He is up eight positions. So, so far, it looks like he might be the hard charger of the night. All of these guys run the same pit strategy, all very short pit cycles. Only person that looks like they have four tires is running ninth place. That's Dalton McKinney. He lost two positions. 
Biggest thing to take away here is those three lead cars, that team working so strong together, they're keeping nose to tail. They are not getting outside that draft much at all and giving no room to 21 behind him to stick in his nose. That's William Lothar, our lone Canadian tonight. His best is trying to get his nose in there, get a strike position. He's got about 34 to go, so plenty of time to click off laps, save a little bit of fuel behind that 04 machine, but oh, that is just such, such tight, tight race in there. Take you on board to Matthew Lee. We're gonna let you see how close those competitors behind him, Blake Edwards, getting right up to him in that Chevy Camaro, that next-gen iRacing Camaro. So if you're unexperienced or not quite familiar with the iRacing service, these are the cars of tomorrow. This is what iRacing can be used in the future for their Cup Series car. Most importantly, the next car is gonna be used. We've got another crash, like Eli Warren goes around for a ride. Eli Warren gets the wall right here. Holds it together. Oh, the 16 machine goes around and absolutely violent crash on the back straight. Does the right thing, holds the brakes down, but oh, you hate to see it. So good for Mr. Warren for uh, having the know-how to hold on to the brakes and kind of stay out of the carnage there, but you hate to see it for the 16 machine. His night's going to come to an early end as he limps that car back home. Second caution of the night with 18 laps on the scoreboard. A lot of these drivers not going to be seeing the green flags run they hoped and uh, kind of expected tonight. Again, hate to see it for Warren. He was running really strong tonight. They just had a uh, little bit of a mistake that rapidly got much worse. He's showing his 11 positions down from where he originally started. So, hate to see that for Warren tonight. He was running really strong. Still at the top of the board though, we've got Matthew Lee, Blayton Edwards, and Peyton Howell still one, two, three. Edwards up four positions, Howell's lost one to his teammate, but these guys again are going to be communicating, they're going to figure out a little bit of pit strategy here, because everybody's on that six second pit window, so they might have come in for fuel. Not sure if they're going to come in now, or if with that pit strategy they had early on in the race, they may be able to stretch out the engine just running fuel. Going to be interesting to see. So watching our competitors pace around here at Daytona gives the drivers a little bit of a, a little bit of a chance to stretch their hands from death gripping that steering wheel. We see some of the uh, some of the field. We've got Jeffrey Radke, Dan Owens, Jay Darger, Kenneth McCullough Jr., Jay, and then uh, looks like that's pretty much everybody coming in for a pit window there. So everybody's along a little bit different strategies here. Some of those guys that. Uh, I took a little bit of splash of fuel, might be coming in and, and willing to risk it, splash off a little bit more and try to make the end, but only, only 30 laps to go. It's going to be interesting to see if these guys can kind of keep it out there. It's going to be lucky to his wave around. Try to get him back to the lead laps and get back here and try to win that $25 grand prize for winning this thing. But as a reminder to our drivers and those at home, Yes, you win $25 if you bring home the goal here tonight. You also have the chance of winning $25 just by being in the main show. So if you went over to the FEG PC we uh, Network website, join their Discord, you too can kind of be in the loop for these upcoming fun events they put on, as well as their main series they run throughout the week. So we're clicking them off here at Daytona. I do not think that was the last caution we're gonna see. The top three running really clean and keeping their cars shiny, but that mid-pack, everybody's fighting to the nail for every position they can get. Uh, again, only the, only the top spot pays out, but everybody's here to race. That's why everybody's on the iRacing service. That's why they're in the FEG PC League. They wanna race.
We're gonna keep an eye on the leaders here. They're gonna try and do the same thing. Wait for that, uh, wait for that pace car to come in, get the best start they can. You can see those three teammates up front of Edwards and Lothar. Excuse me, Al. Their absolute best, but Lothar, again, the Lone K21 machine, he wants a bit of that prize. He wants to get up there and get around those teammates, but he's got his work cut out for him with no, as far as I know, no teammates up there with him. We're gonna get ready for that iRacing pace car to come in. Just got word from the pit lane as well. Tonight they're running 65% fuel. The race cars, or excuse me, race drivers do have a one quick repair. So they can use that to get back in the race. If you like what you see, join the FEG PC Cup Series. Starts May 31st. Go to FEGPC.net. Use our contact form for more information. You can be out here having your name broadcast on the big screen as well. A chance to race with extremely high caliber of racers. And a good chance to bring home a little bit of money as well. Again, that's FEGPC.net. Use our sign up for me. You can get out here and race with the best in the business. All right, iRacing pace car is in. Green flag is out. You're going to see a fleet get another one of his patented launches. He's going to the race track. Just like we said earlier, you see teammates kind of cutting off the 21 behind him. 21 going down the apron, trying to make something happen, but just can't get around that lead pack of Edwards and Howell. You don't want to say, hold on, such a good driver. Working by yourself, much, much harder to get around that lead pack of the really high caliber All of those top three, over a 4,700 I rating, so no strangers to racing, no strangers to pack racing as well, so. Just like that, it's the 04, the 72X, the 71 machine. They're gonna run as tight as they can to get uh, get things going, but we've got a yellow flag already is what I'm seeing. So, looks like that's a uh, crash from Justin Hopp, it sees. Let's see if we can get the replay of Hopp taking a ride for the worse. So Hop, it looks like he's in the 24 machine. Looks like he just gets quarter panel just slightly from the number one. Don't think it was malicious, but around and around he goes. Has the know-how once again to get on the brakes as those safety uh, safety flaps come out. But then he just keeps getting arc of break from his friends behind him. Gets a good 360 in the air, so... At the very least, he might not be in the running, but he does get the announcer's choice replay of the day. A spectacular maneuver by Mr. Hop tonight. So, hate to see his race ended like that. Hopefully he has one fast repair left, but at the very least, if you're not going to make it, make it interesting as Hop does that full 360. I'd like to once again thank FEGPC.net for bringing home the, uh, the prize tonight, sponsoring the series, the broadcast, and putting on a lot of good races. Looking forward to seeing their cup series. Let's run a quick commercial break for those guys. We'll be right back.
right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to get things kicked off and started here. Still under caution here around Daytona International Speedway. Hands down, one of the favorite tracks I've ever had the pleasure of going around. I can't imagine how absolutely terrifying it would be in these, uh, these next-gen cup cars. So we're going to get ready, get them lined up again. But again, so far, most parts tonight, very clean racing tonight. You're really glad to see that. All these competitors doing their best to keep it clean. Uh, with only one fast repair, the competitors do have a chance to kind of get back in there, make something happen. But nobody wants to be the guy that has their night called early. We're going to line them up two by two here. Expecting more of the same good, clean racing here with the FEG PC guys. Little bit of, uh, maybe a little bit of teammate shenanigans there as they're uh, the 72 and the 71 kind of playing with each other. Seeing if they can uh, rile up their buddies maybe a little bit. We're at the halfway mark, ladies and gentlemen, so let's see if these guys can bring it home. Just like that, you see the running board. Not a lot of things getting shaken up on the front of the field. These guys are more than happy to keep running together. Trying to work together as a team and get that big paycheck, $25 on the line. Pace car is in. It is Matthew Lee's show once more. Hey, look at that. Looks like these guys, teammates, once again, are working together. They're going to try and get to that bottom groove as quickly as they can. One, two, three. But this time, we got a little bit more support on the outside line. Little Bozer are doing everything he can to try and get something to happen at the start. The back working together. He's not quite able to get it happening. It has been the Matthew Lee show pretty much all night. I believe he's got the most laps led here. Last pit stop was lap 11, so he may be able to go all the way to the end with 26 to go. Just about that halfway mark. Got to be frustrating for some of these guys, not quite able to get that outside groove working. They want to push up to the front and run quickly, but they might be holding their cards a little bit close to their chest, not quite willing to show what they've gotten able to do, and there might be a few lines that's kind of there that, that top five, that the top three is unaware of. So. You can see that middle group start developing as guys make it happen. We just thought we saw a move by, it looked like it was Donald Stewart. He is up 10 positions, currently running in fourth place tonight. Stewart with one heck of a run, the 78 machine. And for the most part, it is single file as far back as the eye can see. Daytona, one of those tracks where you want to hold that bottom line if you've got the draft partners to work with. To get that outsider, that middle or outside line to work in your favor, you need a pretty big group of cards. You've got to work that side draft and make it happen. But so far, everybody seems like they're pretty content right in single file. Peyton Howell gets a little bit loose on the outside. Donald Stewart kind of sticks the nose and lets him know, hey, I'm still here. I want to get in the middle of that team train, but not quite able to make it happen just yet. The last clicking off 24 to go. You're going to see guys a little bit more aggressive, a little bit less patient, maybe a little bit of more bump and a little bit more grind and start kind of moving these cars out of the way. But still tons and tons of track time left for the guys, so they're not going to want to make anything risky to happen. I believe all these top five do have their fast repairs still up in the bank there, so they they can afford a crash as far as the chance to get the car back out there and knocking out laps. So 
with these big draft changes, it's gonna be extremely hard to make any position unless you've got friends to work with. We see here that see that here with the 72 machine aggressively pushing the 04. Matthew Lee still up front. Peyton Howe currently on blocker duty. He's gonna protect those two lead cars as much as he can and push as aggressively as he can without kind of worrying about spending his friends in front of him, but not a lot the drivers are able to do unless they get that outside line work, and I don't believe. Might have got some help from, I believe it was Craig Arvantes in the 43 machine. Everybody running pretty clean, trying to figure out how hard they can push each other without causing an incident, but so far so good. drivers start to aggressively push and try and make moves forward this early on yeah I don't think you see much uh much of anything different the fastest line is where they're currently at they've got plenty of, plenty of clean air in front of them and they save fuel in that backpack not sure if we're gonna be able to see Matthew Lee go all the way to the end again he pitted lap 11 where most of these other cars did only a six second pit window so he took fuel, he might have taken right tires at the absolute most, but most likely just for a splash of fuel here. Like we heard down the pit wall, very limited fuel that are available to these drivers, so pit strategy is still gonna be in effect at 65% fuel. I think normally you can get about 35 laps out of one tank here. At least that's what we tested at Talladega, so Daytona should be pretty darn similar to fly all the way around this racetrack. We may see one more pit window with about anywhere between 15 and 10 to go, but we're going to try to do the best of plan and, and kind of hope for green flag pit stops. Nobody wants to see a caution here with only 20, 20 to go in that last, last pretty much a stage here. Pretty good clean racing across the board. Let's take a look at Eric Parks. He's back here in the middle of that, or excuse me, at the tail end of that lead pack. Trying to get something happen. He's up seven positions where he currently, or where he originally started in that number 20 machine. He's chasing some pace, also having a really good charge. He's up 12 positions. So, I mean, starting back here, Daytona, people are still pushing, making something happen. Something else to consider, Page and Parks may be on a fuel saving strategy. Uh, in front of him, Page and McKinney currently running seven. These guys took longer the pitch drive than everybody else. Might have been for, for full tires here, but they may be on a slightly different strategy as that lead pack ahead of them. Looks like William Lothar still having a rough time. Rise the camera moves around to him. He gets dumped. Dalton McKinney doesn't let him back in. 21 goes for a ride. 48 goes for a ride. So it looks like Lothar was trying to get low. I believe it's um not quite sure who that was. That might have been Forsberg that didn't quite have the uh, didn't quite yield the room to him and around and around he goes. So that might be an early night for Lothar. But it looks like Lothar's staying out. Might have had a little bit of contact on the outside, but not sure if he's gonna elect to stay out. Looks like he's got pretty substantial aero damage on the front left of that car. The aero here at Daytona, if you're driving in that pack, you've got two or three cars in front of you, you can usually stay linked up, but the second you drop out of line and try to make a pass, you're gonna have a rough, rough time as your car is carrying up to 10 miles an hour less than the competitors in front of you. So it's gonna depend if Lothar's already had to use his fast repair tonight or if he's still got one left in the bank. Up front, not a lot's changed. Matthew Lee still leading the ball by Blayton Edwards and Peyton Howes were under yellow here. So 
So it looks like about 15 laps is the magic number these racers able to go before a caution rears its ugly head. But out front still Lee Edwards Howe, that three-pack team we've been talking about all night. But now we've got Donald Stewart made his way up. Number, I believe it's a 78 machine. That's what live timing shows. Not sure if his car is going to reflect that. It does. A lot of these drivers tonight using custom paint schemes in the league session. They didn't have their number set. So sometimes live time and scoring doesn't quite reflect what the cars show. But since this is not an official league race, it's one of their one-off events. They're not going to be giving out any EOLs for paint schemes or not having contingency packages. None of that fun stuff. So going to let the boys go out there in their offseason and try and little, win a little bit of money. We see Matthew Lee, Edwards, Howell all coming in pit road. Looks like that entire lead pack. With a little bit of luck, this may be their final pit cycle tonight. Now's the chance if these guys have fast repairs left in the bank and they have aero damage, they've got to take it now. Watching Lee leave the pits. Very quick pit stop, four minutes, 90 seconds. Gonna take the absolute minimum fuel they need to the end. Not sure if green white checker is gonna be coming into effect tonight. If so, you can see drivers taking a little bit of extra fuel to account for that. But with 16 to go, this is gonna be the end of the race right here if these guys can keep it clean and green. Seventy two X of Bladen Edwards. He's running second place up four spots tonight. Great pit window is him. I believe he is the fastest car leaving pit road with a four point eight three second pit window. So he nailed all of his marks coming in there. Gives a little bit of a wiggle, waving to the folks out there. He knows what's going on. Keeping that McConey setup shop sponsor machine looking clean tonight. Good for him. Also represented, I believe it's the Shenandoah Shine, that rear uh, rear graphic thing in his sponsors. I, I'm assuming that might be a moonshine company. If I uh, if I am wrong, I am sure I will get a nasty tweet following the race. Let me know, saying you just talked negatively about my car cleaning product. But we'll have to get uh, Edwards up here later and let us know who his sponsors is. Especially if he can finish that top three drivers. If you can hear us out there on the radios, we will be doing post race interviews for the top three as well. May also get series owner Jeffrey Ford in the booth as well. If he gets a moment, we'd love to hear about some of his upcoming races here on the FEG PC Racing League. And we did see in the uh, the crew chief, we've got Jeffrey walking around with his clipboard reminding people they've got the FEG PC Cup Series starting on Wednesday night. So if you want to come out here and race with the best, go to FEGPC.net. Sign-ups are open, I believe. You can get out here and race with the, some of the best guys in the business. A lot of these guys, I recognize from an announcer's point of view, just uh, see them across the sim. Once you get into the, that top split territory, you kind of see the same guys week in and week out. We're going to stack them up two by two as far as the field can be seen. This, with a little bit of luck, ladies and gentlemen, will be the final 15 laps here at Daytona International Speedway. Your top three, Lee Edwards, Arbonati, and Powell, they're kind of going back and forth under... Uh, caution here, but it's going to be the same three of Edwards and Howell in second and third. Everybody's got the right amount of fuel. They've got what it takes to make it to the end. Clicking off absolutely blistering laps tonight. I believe it is Howell. Now, excuse me, it looks like we've got some guys, Kent McCullough Jr. clicking off a 45-15. Is absolutely hauling the mail. We are green once again as Lee Edwards and Howe get back in formation. 
They're gonna run as tight as they possibly can. They're gonna drive defensively with 14 to go. Still anybody show. The last thing these teammates wanna do is push too hard or maybe get a bump from behind and wreck these three very fast cars. We've got 04, 72X, 71, our top three. All right, things are getting a little bit of shaking up as we go yellow once again. We've got Joseph Burgess going off track. And we've got Jose Medina also taking a ride involved in this. Let's see if we can get a replay on that one. Oh, Medina, not sure what he did there. Let's see if we can get a little bit of reverse from our camera crews. Gets a little bit of help, and then as things go from bad to worse, he's on the brakes trying to lock it up, it looks like. Looks like he might still be on the throttle, which is uh, surely not what you want to see, but since he's not on the brakes, his car spinning wildly out of control, collecting a few good men behind him. Not quite the airborne crash we saw earlier. Again, starting to get on the brakes towards the end of that crash, but too little too late. Just, oh, just collecting everybody there. Cars scattering, trying to get out of the way. I lost count. Oh, we got a 180 in the air, so that might be the, the second best, the best replay of the night. A lot of cars collected in that one. A lot of aero damage being awarded to some guys that honestly did not deserve it. So with 13 to go, you can expect things to get a little bit more spicy, a little bit more dicey. These guys know 13 to go, last uh, really 11 green if they keep it clean, so not a lot of time for guys to make moves here. The saving grace for these top three, if they're worried about fuel, this is gonna help them out on that final run. Not sure what the strategy is. Looks like the top three guys might be coming into pit. That's Lee Edwards Howe. Nope, they uh, they get right back on that double yellow. I, I thought we were about to see something crazy happen, but these guys should have the fuel to make it to the end, especially under caution. You're gonna see a lot of these guys saving fuel, trying to uh, conserve as much as they possibly can. Yeah, just taking on board here. We're with Matthew Lee riding on board with him. You're gonna see him get a little bit of a little bit of gas, pulling that clutch, coasting as far as he possibly can. These guys are in prime time fuel saving mode right now with 12 to go. They're gonna do their best to stretch it out at the very end. Especially if there is a green white checker in effect tonight, they're gonna want every drop of gas they possibly can. A little bit of gas, a whole lot of clutch, coast it as long as you possibly can. Looks like Lee again, no damage there. He's got holding 300 RPM, which is uh, which is idle for these machines. So good to see he's got no engine worries going on. All of these top, really all the drivers at this point should be saving fuel unless they're on different strategies than the leaders. These top three, very short pit windows. Everybody else almost double the time. So some people might've been taking tires, but these top three guys know they've got the people to work with. They can keep it nice and tight. It's almost eerie hearing these new cars with this sequential gearboxes make their ways around. Not quite used to that dog pattern shifting we've seen in the cup cars of the past. On behalf of everybody here at Team Goon Squad Live and our broadcasting team, we'd like to extend our thanks to the FEG PC guys for allowing us to come up tonight. First time working with this league. So far, a lot of fun to call. Really clean racing, a lot of talented drivers out there. So, major ups for these gentlemen for putting this event on. More events in the future. Really good to see such clean racing that you can't find elsewhere outside of the FEG PC league. So. Just an amazing quality of drivers tonight. Very great to see. Looking forward to talking to some of these drivers in the post-race interview as well. They're gonna lock.
line them up two by two with about, it's gonna be about 10 laps to go under green. These guys, if there was ever a time where you're gonna see some aggressive passes, now is that time. And we got a three pack of Lee Edwards Howell. They've been our dominant team tonight, but Craig Arvantes, he wants a piece and so does the Donald Stewart as they go green. Just like that, you see that team tucking down low. Still no one able to commit that outside line quite yet. 10 to go, if they're gonna start uh, making a little bit of passes here and try to make something stick, now is the time for the drivers. That inside line is gonna be held very, very tight with the top three. We're waiting to see if Craig Arvanti's that 43 machine. He's got a little bit of a scuffed up paint job, but no worse for wear here. He wants a piece of the action. Arvantes, I believe he's one of the lone Mustangs in that pack. So Arvantes is gonna follow behind, nine to go, still single file. Not a lot of room to make something happen. Everybody seems like they're pretty content. Arvantes gets the run, but he's got nowhere to go with it. No one wants to be the first guy to stick their nose out here and get that outside line working with. Those top three running bumper to bumper, three tight. Oh, that's tight racing. It is gonna be tough for anybody behind them to make something happen. 78 of Donald Stewart, he's behind Craig Arvantes, but a little bit too far off the pack to really assist with the draft here. He may be trying to gauge his run here as well, see if he can get something set up on the outside line with a big, big run on one of the back straights, but Time is ticking for the gentleman to win that $25 in that, uh, if you get that top spot. Again, one of these guys will also, besides the leader, will be taking home $25. They may be putting that towards some of their league entry fees in the future. A lot of money to be made if you find the right guys to race with. You see hints of an outside line starting to form, but with only four cars, not gonna be enough guys to make it happen, I don't think. Still watching Arvantes, he's all over the rear bumper of Peyton Howell. But it is still the Matthew Lee show, currently running up front that 04 machine. He's been pretty much uncontested tonight. Granted, his teammates are right behind him. They might have a strategy on, on who they're gonna try and put to the front, but right now it looks like Lee's gonna get definitely the most laps led tonight. And with seven to go, he is in a prime position to try and bring home the lead. We see the 72, Blayton Howard, he's getting his front end out there, trying to get a little bit of air on the hood of that car. He's pushing so aggressively. There is a chance you can overheat these machines, but you'll see these guys duck to the inside, duck to the outside a little bit on the start finish line straight, excuse me, the, uh, the back straight and the tri-oval. Trying to get a little bit of clean air on the hood of their car, cool things off, but they're gonna do their best to stay linked up and keep making things happen there. Arnotti is not getting support, he needs to make a run at it. He's got the drive, but with nobody behind to really push, push, push. If he gets outside that draft, he's gonna be stuck in no man's land. He's gonna find himself rapidly going to the back of that lead pack. Six laps to go, still anybody's guess on what's gonna happen here. Everybody's hoping for the last remaining laps to go green. We wanna see some good racing. We don't wanna see this decide under caution or the piss off strategies are gonna come into play for some of these drivers, but for the most part, the pretty much undisturbed in the top five. We've got Donald Stewart running fifth, he's up nine spots. Kenneth McCullough Jr., sixth place, he's up 12 spots tonight. Looks like we got a little bit of outside line forming, but nobody's kind of getting the run they need. These guys are gonna get up there unless they start working together and get that outside line forming. That outside line snaking back and forth pretty bad. Not sure if that's blocking or just having a rough go holding the line in this draft, but that is, uh, that is the opposite of what you need. I believe that was, it might have been Steve 
Page or Donald Stewart. Not quite sure what machine that was. He was right behind Armantes, but then tried to get something else for him and just kind of just saying all rage. Unless you've got support behind you, you're not going to be able to make it happen. Four laps to go here around Daytona. And things are going to get exciting. Now is the time. Armantes doing everything in his power to get that outside run. He, that outside line working. He's got to run, but not enough to reel in that lead pack. They're four or five cars deep and just can't quite get the draft partners they need. He's side drafting as hard as he can, trying to make something happen. We've got 43. It looks like he might, up. Nope, he bails out of that second line. Three to go. The guys are going to be pushing as hard as they can. It's still Lee Edwards out of front. Arvantes wants to make it happen. He's running fourth. He's been there all night. He can see victory right in front of him, but just not able to get it going. Lee with a pretty good gap to Arvantes. They're about to Head, which, granted, if you've got the draft partners, not a crazy amount of gap, but we'll say the 20s of Eric Park starting to push uh, Avanti's just a little bit harder. And then you've got the one of Kenneth McCullough Jr. He tries going high, gets passed by Stephen Page. Can't get that line working. We're going to come up on two to go. If there was ever a time to see something happen, now is it, gentlemen. For the most part, you've got McCullough Jr. and Jeffrey Radke trying to get that outside lug working. Just that two pack of cars, not a whole lot they can do as far as draft. They do have lap cars in front of them. No blue flags in NASCAR, but it is common courtesy for lap cars to hold the the uh, outside of the preferred line. So around here in Talladega, the preferred line looks like it's the inside for all these competitors. They're getting a little bit loose behind them as the 20 and the 13 kind of get a little bit in each other, trying to push a little bit harder. But Lee Edwards holding it off, blue, white, black, and they're going to come around one more time. There they go. Looks like that was Donald Stewart, possibly Eric Parks involved in that. Caution is out, another one, the 43 machine, that's Cervantes goes around, takes a ride, they are crashing all over the place. Absolute carnage, not seeing any yellow flags, they're gonna keep this thing green and run to the end. It looks like it's gonna be Matthew Lee for the win. Lap car, the number 16, doing the right thing, kinda getting out of the way there, so major ups to him, but Lee Edwards Howell go unchecked. They are gonna bring it home for the FEG PC Daytona 50. Lee gonna bring home the money position tonight. Gonna bring home that nice check, $25. Good for Lee. Spectacular racing. Shame to see those top five guys kind of get collected at the very end there. Let's see if we can get a replay of that one real quickly. So not quite sure what caused Avantes to get loose there, but he gets right inside of, I believe it was McCullough. Just comes up the track, cleans out the number one, nowhere to go. Not quite sure how he got loose there. It's kind of a weird place to crash and a weird reason for the car to come around, but... That is going to be one of the big ones there at the very end. That's going to be your top five crashing out. You see McCullough drifting back up the racetrack. Number nine does his best to avoid the carnage. That's Jeffrey Radke. Absolute carnage here at Daytona International Speedway, ladies and gentlemen. We see the 04 doing a spectacular burnout. We've got our top three tonight. Lee, Edwards, Howell, bringing it home for the team. So major ups to those guys. Let's see if we can get them in the interview booth here in a second. And let's take a look at your unofficial results. Up front, we've got Matthew Lee, Blayton Edwards, Peyton Howell, bringing home your top three. Radke in fourth, Owens fifth. We've got Jay Dart in sixth, Stephen Page seventh, Jose Medina eighth, Chad Ross ninth. James Kaufman, 10th. Craig Arvantes all the way back down to 11th at that last lap crash. O'Hearn in 12th. Lothar's 13th. Warren, 14th. Burgess, 15th. Kenneth McCullough Jr., again, one of those top runners. He's in, finishes 16th after a little bit of carnage in the last lap. Donald Stewart, 17th. And then finally, 
We've got Eric Parks in 18. Nineteenth, we've got Jesse Boba, Dalton McKinney. We got Buddy Pitts bringing twenty-first, Joshua Doobie, Justin Hop, Dustin Forsberg bring out the top of the field and the top twenty-four cars that finished tonight. So well done to all of our competitors. Good job, to Team CGE, bringing home one, two, three tonight. Extremely impressive performance from all the drivers tonight. All right, we're going to take it over to the interviews right now. We've got our top three. We've got Peyton Howell finishing third. Howell, do you hear me, man? Yeah, I got you. Howell, looks like the team brought home a dominant performance tonight. One, two, three. What was the strategy to put all of your cars up front? Yeah, uh, we just uh, just tried to all get everybody in line, and once we got in line, we knew that we, with the bubble and all that stuff, that we could hold those guys back and get CG either one, two, three here tonight. Yeah, spectacular finish from all the team cars. Did you guys have a lot of strategy going into this tonight, or was it kind of a thrown together, let's go try and win some money type deal? It was, uh, just thrown together, let's go win some money. Excellent. Glad to see you. How, uh, before we let you go, anybody you'd like to thank tonight? I'd like to thank CGE, Shenandoah Shine, Martin Sports, um, McConey Setup Shop, and uh, Butt Kicker, for, and uh, prayers for Pete. Uh, he has cancer, and uh, he's going through chemo and all that stuff right now. Excellent. Well, that's our top, our third place finisher, Peyton Howell. Thank you for everything. Great race tonight. We'll see you next time. All right. Up next in the broadcast booth, we've got Blayton Edwards bringing it home in second for the team. Edwards, do you read me? Hey. Edwards, you brought home second. Again, one, two, three for CGE. Spectacular performance tonight. What do you think of the new cup cars here at Daytona International? The new cup cars, they're so much fun here. I think they're much better than any other uh, car we had here so far. Yeah, it looks like the bubble's a little bit less of an effect here compared to the, the current generation of cup cars. You guys were running uh, pretty much nose to tail the, uh, the entire event. Was there any, any worries about getting these newer cars loose as you run bumper to bumper around Daytona? Only concern was bumping in the corner because any car doesn't like that here. And it's kind of hard to get off whenever you get stuck. But other than that, there's no worries. Awesome. Well, Bladen, you ran great tonight. You brought a home second for the team. Anybody would like to thank tonight before we let you go? I'd like to thank Senator Shine, CGE, uh, guys over at Marconi Setup Shop, Martin Sports especially, uh, Butt Kicker, and that's about it. Awesome. Well, Edwards, great run tonight. We hope to see you at the next one. Cup Series starting up on Wednesday for FEGPC. Are you and the team going to come out and try and put down some more dominant wins? Talking about it. All right, Edwards. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Thank you. And finally, we've got tonight's winner, Matthew Lee, bringing it home in first. Lee, do you read me, man? I gotcha. Lee, dominant performance start to finish. I don't think you did not lead a single lap. What was the team strategy going in tonight? Did you guys do expect to do as well as you did? Yeah, we worked together pretty well with the super speedway stuff. And, uh, you know, team, team attitude first. Oh, yeah. Very cool to see all three cars in that one, two, three spots tonight. Uh, we asked Edwards and Howell the same, but what do you guys, or what do you think about these new generation cup cars? Do you like them more or less than the old gen, or what's your thoughts? Um, here they seem pretty much the same. I mean, they're a little smoother to drive. Um, I get a little bit of a chance to test the difference between them at Coda on the road course, and, um, you gotta be careful with these. When they start to get away from you, they really get loose quick. And it's really hard to save. Uh, it's one thing I've really noticed the difference with the independent rear suspension is once it starts to get loose on you from pushing too hard, it's uh, really hard to get it gathered back up. Right on. Well, uh, Lee, again, dominant performance tonight. Before I let you go, anybody you'd like to thank? Yeah, I got to thank all the guys at CGE, uh, McConey Setup Shop, uh, Martin Sports, GTR Simulators, uh, Shenandoah Shine. And uh, you guys for putting on broadcast, really appreciate it. Well, very glad to, Lee. We appreciate you. We, uh, we enjoyed watching that absolute dominant performance by the CGE machines tonight, and we hope to see you at the next one. Definitely.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to bring it home tonight for the FEG PC Daytona 50. We're going to see uh, see you guys Wednesday nights, May 31st. They'll be running the FEG PC Cup Series. Go to FEGPC.net, and you too can be a racer and join the FEG PC team. My name is James East on behalf of Team Goon Squad Live. I appreciate you all tuning in tonight, and we'll see you next time.